Hi everyone, and welcome to TypeScript and GitHub Code Spaces. My name's Aaron Powell. I'm a principal cloud advocate here at Microsoft. And I've been doing web development for a little over 15 years now. I remember when we were targeting browsers like Netscape and really early versions of IE and IE on Mac. And over those years, I've had a chance to use a lot of different tools for doing JavaScript development from really basic things like Notepad. I remember like working with Notepad as a tool all the way up to really complex editors such as Visual Studio and kind of everything in between. But today I want to talk about something that I think is a really exciting addition to the editor tool chain that people have, and that is GitHub Code Spaces. Now, if you're not familiar with GitHub Code Spaces, it's currently in beta, but essentially it's Visual Studio Code running in the browser like fully in the browser. Everything that you love about VS Code, the extensibility, the flexibility, the customization that you can do to it, all without having to install a single bit of software. Now, what makes this really exciting for me is that I've just got a new computer and I haven't had a chance to install everything. And you know what it's like when you first get a new computer is that you spend the, the next week making sure you've installed absolutely everything you used to have and chances are you're forgetting something anyway. But having VS Code, being able to just run it through code spaces means I don't have to think about that. Whether I want extensions installed, just to work with NPM or my Prettier and the ESLint and stuff like that, up to the complex extensions like LiveShare, so I can actually share my whole editor environment across to a colleague to do some peer review. I can do that without having to install anything. But that's enough just like looking at slides and seeing this sort of stuff. Let's jump over to the browser and actually check out code spaces. I've got a project here that I've been working on in my spare time and uh, it's kind of in a partially completed state. Uh, I, I want to go ahead and finish it off and I thought you know, code space is a good way to do it because I make sure I don't have to worry about you know, having everything set up ready on my new, new machine. I've got the important stuff there but I might not have all of the like the one-time use extensions or the, the things that like kind of sit around the edge. So for that I can do with code spaces. And to get started with code spaces, you would clone the repository kind of like you would normally you know, with using a GitHub CLI or any other options, but instead we have code spaces as an option. Now I've actually already gone ahead and created the code space just because I wanted to you know, speed it up a little bit. Now you don't wait for um, that to all set up in the back end. It'll take a, a couple of minutes initially, but um, once you've already got a code space provision, it'll just be a really quick process each time in the future to restart it rather than create it fully from scratch. So we'll jump over to our code space and check it out. Like I said, I've already set it up. So here it is. It's, it looks pretty much like VS Code. It's even got the theme that I had on my old machine already going. Like it, it's got the, the dark theme here. If I jump over to extensions, we'll see that I've got all the extensions that I would you know, be expecting um, for working with you know, all the different things I do in VS Code. They're just there, they're available, but they're now running within the browser. I can even do things like npm installs and stuff like that because this is a, a, a React application um, written in uh, React with TypeScript and it's got a GraphQL API backend which is written in um, TypeScript as well. Uh, so we kind of want to finish off connecting all of those bits together. So we're going to jump into the GraphQL schema that I have kind of started to write but not completed. In fact, I've just created the blank file. And using the magic of uh, editing, I'm actually going to scaffold all of this out. There we go. So that's my schema um, quickly built out. It's got a couple of types in there. It's got some queries and some mutations and all that sort of stuff. Now I need to connect this into my React application. I'm using the Apollo, sorry, into my GraphQL application. The React application will come down the track. Um, so I'm using uh, the Apollo integration for Azure Functions, uh, which gives me um, just integration into Azure Functions for a GraphQL backend. Uh, I have a resolvers function, which we'll need to implement some actual resolvers at some point. But I've also got a database that I'm connecting to, and this is stored in Cosmos DB. Uh, so I've got a couple of types, you know, the, the data model that is in my Cosmos DB database, and that's defined here as question model. I then have an interface which represents the, the data store, because I just have a mock version as well, so it can run in memory. And then um, we've got our implementation against Cosmos with a couple of um, private properties uh, using the like the new TypeScript um, 
Oh, sorry. The, the new ECMAScript script proposal for private properties with the the hash prefix, uh, and then you know, some some methods on there that's going to talk to Cosmos DB, download some data, you know, return all that stuff out. So we'll come over to our resolvers and actually start implementing one of these. So we'll start with question now because I know that this is Apollo. Um, and, and I've worked with Apollo before. I, I know the signatures, but I don't currently have any sort of TypeScript support here. I know that I'm going to get a parent, but which I can ignore in the query because I don't need the parent. I know that I can get the argument passed in, which is called ID. That's what I had in my schema. We'll see there. Uh, and I know that I can get access to the database through the context because I've already defined that. So we'll pop that in there. And then, because like we know what this is all defined like, we can do data store dot get question by ID ID, and then like I know that that will work because that's the way that the code is written. And then like, we we'll come back later and we'll implement our get random question and stuff like that. But yeah, like I said I know that this is there, but I don't have any sort of like value of TypeScript at this point in time. Like it's just any's all around the place. So this is where. I want to use a tool called type, uh, called GraphQL CodeGen to generate the TypeScript types from uh, the GraphQL application, uh, GraphQL schema. So I'll come to our CodeGen file here, and we'll just I'm just going to again use the magic of television and quickly insert the config. And I'm just going to comment out some stuff that we'll come back to and talk about what it's doing and why it's useful later, but. What we're primarily doing is specifying where the schema is, telling it we're going to generate a file called generated.ts, and we're going to use the TypeScript and the TypeScript Resolvers plugin. So if we come into the API folder, now I've already gone ahead and pre-installed these uh, npm packages, and I've created an npm script called gen, which will run the, the GraphQL code generator. So we will go npm run gen. This will then, you know, I, this is running in the browser. Like I'm, I'm running npm in a terminal in a browser. Like that's kind of cool. <laughs> it kind of blows my mind when I think about that. Excellent. It, it's generated our file. If we have a look, and this is a bunch of TypeScript type definitions. We'll see that we have the, uh, uh, if we come down, here's that question that's defined in our schema. Yep. It's got all the same properties. And if I jump right down to the bottom, we have our question resolver, which has question and get random question. So now I can actually go ahead and start implementing some strongly typed resolvers. So I can import, I can use resolver, which we'll have imported from the generated file. And now if we save that, oh, resolvers, sorry, it's resolvers, not resolver. Um, so now if I hover over ID, we know that it's a string because that's the way that that um, GraphQL type is represented in JavaScript or TypeScript. It's represented as a string. Uh, the question, we say, great, it's going to return us um, the, the right type. It's going to return a question type. Um, I haven't implemented get random question, so we'll have to come back and do that in a moment. Uh, but, but now we're starting to get some type safety into our application. Again, I'm just doing this using, uh, using like fairly standard TypeScript stuff and some code generation tools. But I still don't have the type for the data store. Now, this is the first thing that I will uh, uncomment back here, which is if I've got, say, a custom uh, context or something like that that I want the application to be aware of, like the, the GraphQL schema doesn't understand that because the context is specific to your implementation of that schema or the, the resolvers for that schema. So I can tell the code generator, well, I actually have to find a strong type for the context with this context type config property. You'll find it in the file dot slash data. And then hash just indicates that that's the export. And context is what it's going to be there. So if we jump into the data file, we'll see there's our context. It's been exported correctly. So now if I was to run the generator again, we'll give that a second, we'll hover over data store. Excellent. We know that we've now got a strongly typed data store. And now I'm getting a follow on uh, issue. Well, the problem is that the data store and this get question by ID is returning a question model. Come back to our data file. See, question model has ID, question, but then a bunch of things that don't exist within our schema, like category or incorrect answers, 
type and difficulty. We just have correct answer, answers, and question. So now what I need to do is I need to tell the code generator, well, here is the other files that I want you, uh, so other types that you can also handle from a mapping standpoint. So I'll uncomment that. I'm saying if you find a question type in our schema, well, the resolver is initially going to have a question model as the type, and then I will tell you how to map that into a question. So we'll save that one, and we will rerun our application, or sorry, rerun our code generator. And now our question resolver is working correctly. We're going to implement the rest of the resolvers, and I'm just going to quickly do that. There we go. Again, magic of television, just copy and paste that from my um, prepared uh, demo earlier. Now we have get random question, and then importantly, I've got my question resolver. So that's the question model resolver. Uh, so the question schema type resolver, which will convert the question model, which I get here as the argument, into a question type, which is what is understood by GraphQL. So we're just doing something really simple to build out the, the answers and you know, so on and so forth. So that's how that's all up and running. Excellent. Now the final thing is, well, I've written a bunch of code, but can we actually test this application and make sure that it works? Well, of course, this is VS Code. I can start this application up just the same as I would any other VS Code application. It just so happens that I'm running in code spaces, which is now running within the browser. So I will come into, uh, let's come into the root. So we'll do npm start. So we'll kick off the React application. And we're going to create a new terminal. And we'll come into the API folder. Or npm start on the API. We jump back. We'll just make sure that, OK, cool. So we're starting the, the, the development server. So what this is doing is it's, it's running the server on the remote environment that's been created using code spaces. Uh, so this is running a, a VM somewhere, I guess. I, I don't know. It's, it's in the cloud. It's, it's on someone else's computer at the very least. Uh, but that is, is then going to be, need to be available for me. But this is all local servers. So they're traditionally running on local host. So how are we going to be able to get to those? Well, just need to wait for our server to start up. Excellent. There we go. And you'll see that I've got a little notification, which is actually hidden behind me. I'll just go to a slightly wider view. So a little notification that's popped up here, and it says that, well, it's detected that there's been a port open. Actually, there's a whole bunch of them that's been opened now. And do you want me to open that in the browser? Because it's setting up port forwarding for us. So we can see that in code spaces. If I come to the remote explorer in the toolbar here, and I'll just collapse off a couple of things we don't need at the moment, and we'll see, here we go. We have a bunch of exposed ports. Port 3000, it knows it's being forwarded. And then I have a little link that I can click open in browser. Let's do that. This is going to pop open our application in a new browser tab, and it's going to then open a tunnel through to the local host version of that, which is running on a container somewhere. And we'll give this a moment, and then we should have, here we go, here's our React application. Up and running, I've got, uh, I can start the new game, and here we go. Here's the first question, uh, which I have no idea the answer for. I've just got a bunch of random questions that have come from uh, a website called Open Trivia DB. Uh, so let's just pick one. Submit answer. Oh, got it wrong. Um, and now I could go ahead and finish off the rest of this application. You know, uh, give me the ability, or oh, I can submit, pick a different answer. Hey, there we go. Uh, and then have it so that I could generate a new question and so on and so forth. But this is, if we have a look in the uh, browser dev tools, and I'll just click submit answer again. You'll see this is hitting the API backend, which is performing a GraphQL query, which is running in Azure Functions, which is actually running on a separate port. We have a look here. So this is actually running on port 7, uh, 7071. Now I'm just proxying that using the proxying feature that I have with inside of um, the Create React app, which is what I'm using here to proxy that through. So as far as the, the web application is concerned, this is just a, a single application. Um, I don't have you know, uh, have to deal with calls or anything like that. And this is, it. it's entirely running in the browser. I'm just connecting to it using uh, code spaces and it's just, it's giving me all the power that I need. I can do everything I would normally want to do in, like from zero to hero in terms of building an application. 
And that's all I wanted to cover today in our quick look at how we can use TypeScript, GraphQL, and Codespaces together to create a remote development environment that doesn't need me to set anything up on my machine. Still have all the power that we want from an environment that we would normally have installed locally, all the same extensions, even to the point where I can run a local host based web server with a proxied web server somewhere else in the cloud and just connect to it as though it was available anywhere. Uh, uh, if you want to learn more about Codespaces, you can sign up for the uh, beta at github.com slash Codespaces. If you want to check out the sample application we're looking here at in this, uh, this demo, it's at github.com slash AaronPower slash GraphQL code generator sample. Uh, there's some QR codes as well, um, make it easier for you to jump through. Uh, my name's Aaron Powell. It's been a pleasure presenting this to yourselves today. Uh, if you want to get in touch, there's my contact details. But have fun and enjoy the rest of the event. Bye for now.